How many of you ever been to the doctor for your eyes before? Just wave your hand. Some of you need to go. You've been holding it off. No, you can't see right. You trusting God with it, saying, God, I'm just believing for a miracle. And God is saying, I have provided a miracle through glasses and contacts. <laughs> you know it's bad when you go to renew your license and they put your forehead on that thing. And they tell you, look in there. Tell me what you see. Call out the alphabets. You like Z. They like try again. <laughs> then when it's real bad, before I got LASIK surgery, y'all, it was bad. I was in there squinting with one eye, just guessing stuff. State trooper said, Pastor Timberlake, I probably want to go get your eyes checked out. I said, you're probably right, brother. You're probably right. Went and got my eyes checked out. They set me down in the chair. You know, they put that thing over your eyes and they start twisting stuff. You feel like you're in a spaceship. And then they tell you to look at a mirror and the mirror is reflecting alphabets on the back wall. It's just like, why can't I just look at the back of the wall? Why I got to look at a mirror to look behind me? And they begin to tell you which line to read. And it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Then by the second to last line, you're just hoping to God you get one right. <laughs> you're in there praying in the spirit, Lord, please. Honda and Ashanda, God, please. In the name of Jesus, help me, help me, help me. Thank you, Lord. And the doctor comes back with the conclusion, you need glasses. It is as super spiritual as that. Oftentimes, though, when you go through these tests, they repeat, look at it again. Look again. Is it A or is it B? Is it A or is it B? Look again. And you go through this series of looking at the same thing again. With God, God allows us to see something different and look at the same season and come to a different conclusion. You, you know what it's supposed to be. You know how it's supposed to play out. You know how the scenario is supposed to end. But oftentimes, God says, look again, because only God can take the mistakes and the mishaps and the moments that we have botched through our humanity and turned them into miracles. His word says that he is the only one that can take the good and the bad and make them work together for the good of those that love the Lord. I wonder am I talking to anyone that loves the Lord this morning? And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are in this fiery furnace, and King Nebuchadnezzar, he knows what he put in there. He knows that the fire is blazing hot, and he understands that these three men, by all accounts, should be consumed by the fire, and they're not. And he tells his servants, bring them to me. The servants come back in one translation and say the furnace is too hot. So he gets up and he goes into the doorway of the furnace and he calls them out. Now, can you imagine being in a furnace or being in a fireplace or even being in a burning house and you are not getting burned? Do you know the faith? Do you know the trust in God? Do you know the level of, of faithfulness it takes to stay put in a place that's uncomfortable? We, we don't know what it is to have long suffering anymore. Because the moment something gets uncomfortable is the moment we believe God is no longer there. When in fact, sometimes God changes us in the uncomfort, by the uncomfort, so that we can help other people who are also uncomfortable. Maybe the thing that you're running from is the exact place God desires to do a miracle in. 
Maybe the thing that you have called uncomfortable is the exact place that God wants to provide your breakthrough in. It's time for us to stop running away from the problems and start inviting God into them. That there, there's something, though, that's unique, that's uncommon in today's society that we can learn from these three incredible men of God when we're under pressure, when we find ourselves in hot situations. Daniel chapter 3, verse 16 says, Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to Nebuchadnezzar, We don't need to defend ourselves in this matter. Have you ever been in a season where you felt like defending yourself? Have you ever been through a day and a time where people were talking about you and the first thing you wanted to do was react? Give them a piece of your mind. Tell them who you are and tell them how you feel and give them every bit of your flesh and God is saying you will remain silent. Have you ever been there? I'm telling you, I didn't came out of a season like that, y'all. I wanted to come up here and just tell y'all everything and God says, shut up. I say, yes, sir. You don't have to defend yourself when God is fighting for you. You don't have to fight on your behalf when God is fighting for you. You don't have to do nothing but stand faithful in the middle of the season, the test, the situation, the circumstance, the trial, the tribulation, and watch the mighty hand of God work on your behalf. Is there anybody grateful that God is working for you? They left you for dead, and God is saying, look again. They abandoned you, and God said, look again. They talk bad about you, and God is saying, look again. And the next time they see you, they're going to find you better than the way they left you. Is there anybody grateful that God lifts you up out of the muck and mire when other people walk away from you? Somebody shout, look again. This is not your final form. You are changing into who God created you to be. And oftentimes the change only takes place in the middle of crisis. We love to rejoice over the good times. We, we love to run chuckles over the great times. We, we love to hear God is going to bless you beyond your wildest dreams. <laughs> But how many of us get excited and thankful when God says there's a test right ahead of you? That there's, there's a furnace you got to walk into. There's pressure up ahead. We don't shout for that. We don't say thank you Jesus for the pressure. Thank you, God, for the pressing. <laughs> this is what I've come to learn. Pressure turns to power when God is doing the pressing. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in this furnace, and they give us some tools that we can look at when we find ourselves in the furnace of life. I have to have my mind made up that no matter what, I will trust God in the middle of the furnace. There's a blueprint that God has given us that we can all look at. And the first step in this blueprint is understanding this, point number one, that God will walk through the fire with me. Daniel chapter 3, verse 24, verse 25 says, but suddenly Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement. And he asked his advisors, didn't we tie up three men and throw them in the furnace? Yes, we did, they said. Well, look now, he shouted. You can see four men now unbound, walking around freely in the fire, unharmed. And the fourth man looks like the son of God. God will walk with you through the fire. Don't run from the fire when God wants to walk with you through the fire. Don't flee from the fire when God wants to walk with you through the fire. 
because it's only in the fire that you can see the hand of God perform the miracle that you need. If Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego would not have been faithful to trust God, we would not read about them. And oftentimes we want people to read about the victories without people understanding the struggle it took to get there. We, we, we like to talk about our, our mountaintop moments, but we don't like to testify about the valley moments we had and how we felt like giving up, but somehow God met us at the lowest point in the lowest moment. And he walked with us through every low valley of our lives. And he guided us out of the hand of destruction and brought us to the very place that we are today. And if it had not been for the grace of God, where in the world would we be? We got to stop acting like we perfect and, and we got everything we got because we are all powerful and all knowing. You don't got what you got because of you. You got what you got because of him. And when you give him praise, he reminds you of how great of a God he is. And he says when praises go up, blessings come down. And some of you, you are in dire need of a blessing but you still got your mouth closed when you open up your mouth he releases what's in his hand I believe some of you are in the fiery furnace right now and the enemy is looking at you and saying they're going to get consumed they're going to be overtaken they're going to be burned to death and God is saying uh uh look again look at what I'm doing in the midst of the fire look at what I'm doing in the midst of the pain look at what I'm doing in the midst of the heat look at what I'm doing in the midst of the pressure when you can look again you can see what God is doing God said he'll be with you. He said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. I'll be with you until the very end of all time. Hallelujah. Very end of all time, God said he'll be with you. The second thing that we see is God will burn off everything trying to keep you bound. Again, the scripture reads, Suddenly, Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement and asked his advisors, didn't we tie up three men and throw them into the furnace? Whatever has you tied up is about to get loosed up. What, whatever had you bound is about to get broken. Whatever had you locked up, you about to get free from. Because when you are in the fire with an all-consuming fire, everything that has you bound has to get released. I wonder, is there anybody listening to me right now that may have came into this moment feeling restricted, that may have came into this moment feeling in shackle, that may have came into this moment feeling enslaved to something, and now God is saying, because I am with you, you will be free. And who the sun sets free. Who the sun sets free, it's free indeed. When you stay put long enough, God says he'll bring you out soon enough. When you stay put long enough, God says he'll bring you out soon enough. You say, well, Pastor, how soon is soon? It's hot in here. Sweat my makeup off. My shoes done melted. As long as it takes for God to prove a point to you and your adversaries that no matter what they did to try to kill you and make you go crazy, they can't kill you or make you go crazy. Do you understand you cannot die until you fulfill the assignment God has for your life? They can try to curse you. They can put spells on you. They can talk trash about you. And you just stay put in the presence of God, even in the midst of the fire, understanding no matter what they said, God is with me. And if God be for me, who or what can stand against me? Is there anybody that understands how free you are? If you understand that freedom looks good, good on you. Why don't you jump up on your feet and give God 10 seconds of real good praise. Turn to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, freedom looks good on you. Freedom looks real good on you. Freedom looks good on you. Looks good on you. Y'all let me finish acting crazy and stuff. Point number three is this, 
This is the promise that God gives you. God will make sure you come out unharmed. I know what the plan of the enemy was. I know what the doctor said. I know you thought you were going crazy, but God says you are coming out of this unharmed. And when you come out, they will see you come out and stand in amazement. The reason they had to see you go in publicly is because they're going to see you come out publicly. The reason they watched you go in is because they're going to watch you come out. Is there anybody that can take a moment to prophesy over yourself and tell yourself, I'm coming out of this situation and this season, and it ain't nothing they can do about it. Three men went out. Just as three men went in. It says they were not burned. The hair on their head was not sinned. Their clothes were not burned. And when they came out, they didn't even smell like smoke. Let me help you out with this revelation. You won't look like what you have survived. The person you're sitting beside has survived more than you know, and the reality is they don't look like what they've been through. Aren't you grateful that when God brings you out, he doesn't just bring you out halfway. He brings you out all the way, and he says, here, let me put a cloak over you. Let me put a hedge of protection over you. Not one of your hairs will be singed. Not one of your clothing will be burned. You're not going to even smell like smoke. People are going to ask you, weren't you in this situation last year? Weren't you going through this this time last week? Weren't you struggling with this? And you can look at them and say, look again, my God has provided for me. His grace is sufficient for me. Everything that you saw me going through then, I ain't going through now because God is good and because he's good, I am who I am. Somebody shall look, look again. Daniel chapter 3, verse 26. I want this to get deep down in your spirit so when you are tested this week, you can tell your situation and your circumstance to look again. It says, then King Nebuchadnezzar came as close as he could to the door of the flaming furnace and he shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out. Come out at once. So the three men stepped out of the fire, then the princes, the prefects, the governors, and the advisors crowded around them and saw that the fire had not touched them. Not a hair on their heads was singed and their clothing was not scorched. Then they didn't even smell like smoke. When you understand what you are supposed to look like and you understand what you're supposed to feel like and you understand what the enemy had planned for you, and then you see how the hedge of protection that God has placed over you has kept you like only God can keep you, and you see how the blood of Jesus has covered you like only the blood of Jesus can cover you when you knew you should have lost your mind, and you knew you should have went crazy, and you knew everything that you had worked for should have been gone, but God said, look again, you still got your right mind, you still got clothes on your back, you still got a roof over your head, you still got people people in your life that love you. I know they left, but you still got people in your life that love you. You still have provision because I am a provider and beside me, there is no one else. I dare you to look again. I ain't talking to everybody, but I am talking to a few people that understand where they would have been if it had not been for the grace of God on your side, if it had not been for the blood of Jesus, if it had not been for the grace that rests on your life. You knew you was in the furnace. You knew it was supposed to consume you. You knew it was supposed to take you out. You knew cancer was supposed to kill you. And God said, I want you to look again. It won't kill you. It won't overtake you. It's not going to take your mind. I got you. Let me get
give you the fourth promise. Yeah. 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 You may ask, what are those people screaming and shouting about? They're counting how many times God brought them out. You're wondering, what are those people screaming and shouting about? They're counting how many times God brought them over. You're wondering how in the world did I get to where I am? And it's because of the grace of Jesus Christ. I dare to jump up on your feet, throw your hands up, open up your mouth, and give God some glory. Shia! I ain't come to play around this morning. I came to take my stuff back. I came to serve notice to the enemy. Yeah, you tried it and I'm still here. Yeah, you gave your best shot and I'm still here. Yeah, you gave it all you had and you're still here. Somebody shall look again. Sit down, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. Let me finish. The fourth promise, the fourth promise that God gives us. what the report said you know how long they gave you you know what they came back with and God is telling you to look again I came to declare over someone you will live and not die you shall live to see the mighty hand of God at work on and in your life you will live and not die you shall see the mighty hand of God at work on your behalf Number four says, God will reward your faith. First Corinthians chapter three, verse 10 says, each of us must be careful how we build our lives because Christ is the only solid foundation. Whatever we build on that foundation will be tested by fire. If what we built is left standing, we will be rewarded. I came to announce to you today, you're still standing. Did you hear what I said, church? I said, you're still standing. The very fact that you're here in this moment is a testament that you're still standing. And having done all to stand, keep on standing I know you may be getting tired keep on standing I know you may be getting weary keep on standing I know you feel weak and giving up but keep on standing I know you feel like throwing in the towel but keep on standing because if you faint not the word of God says you shall reap a righteous reward Bow your heads, close your eyes. I want to talk to a few folk who know that they are in the fire right now. You feel like you're being consumed. You feel like it's too much. That's you. I just want you to throw your hands up right now. I just want to prophesy to you for a moment. It won't consume you. He will consume it. I said it won't consume you. 
he will consume it. The word of God says he is an all-consuming fire. And I know that it's hot. I know that it's uncomfortable. I know it's inconvenient. But I want you to know if you can stay put for a little while longer, he's going to bring you out publicly. And what God does in and through you, everyone that sees it will testify of the goodness of God. I want to pray with you. Lord, I set myself in agreement with those that have their hands lifted right now. I just thank you, God, that you would allow your presence to be felt. Allow them to know that you are with them. Not only are you with them, but you are for them. And if you stand with us, God, what could stand against us? Your blood covers us. Your grace protects us. Your mercy is a shield for us. And God, we declare and decree today that we are coming out of it. And we won't look like what we've been through. I said we are coming out of it and we won't look like what we've been through. Oh, you need to declare that over your life. I'm coming out and I will not look like what I've been through. In the name of Jesus, the Christ, our King. It is in your name that we pray. And if you believe that, put those hands together.